In this lesson, we're going to look at aggregation binding and property binding. Aggregation binding is used to bind a collection of values, like binding multiple rows to a table. To use aggregation, you have to use a control that acts as a template, such as a list item with a combo box. The aggregation binding can also be defined using the bind aggregation method of a control. Most of the properties of a control can be bound to model properties. There are two ways to bind properties to the model. In the constructor, with curly braces, or using the bind property method. Alternatively, you can bind by using the path of the model. Let's take a look at an example of data binding in an application. We'll start with our JSON model, which contains multiple data entries. You can see that there's a section called Selection, as well as another section called Data. And the Data section contains multiple entries that represent various fruits and vegetables. We want to bind this with a template item, and we'll use a list item control to bind the text values in the data section to the list item so that they appear in the dropdown. And then we'll bind that section called selection to the combo box so that we can see the value all kinds in the combo box inside the application. So after we've created our controls, we set the model to the control by using the set model method on the combo box, and the bind value method sets the section, in this case selection, for the combo box. Finally, we use the place app method to display the control in the UI area of the application. When we preview this, we can see when we click the dropdown that our fruits and vegetables appear in the list item and the all kinds section appears above. Let's look at binding paths in more detail. With this example model data, we can see that there are several absolute binding paths available. There's also relative binding paths within the company context and relative binding paths within an aggregation binding of company slash contacts, including the name and the phone number. It is possible to set multiple models for an element or the core by specifying individual names for the models which are used to identify them. This is done in the constructor or the set model method. You can then reference the name of the model when you're accessing bind values or aggregation bindings for a named model. 